Hello everyone, and welcome to my Days of Our Lives official. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Holly brought Sarah some donuts at the hospital. Considering everything, I'm fine. In reality, Sarah admitted, I'm worried about Xander. Why? What is Xander's situation? Holly inquired. Sarah clarified that Xander was upset and having trouble understanding Sarah's paralysis. Sarah said, I'm a little concerned that he might take it out on the wrong person. Xander seemed frustrated, as Holly pointed out, and Sarah concurred. Jada is undoubtedly making every effort. Simply put, Xander won't stop until someone is taken into custody. And for that, I adore him. Sarah remarked, I just hope he doesn't end up locked up in the process. Then, does Xander do this kind of thing frequently? Holly inquired. With a smile, Sarah observed that Xander seemed guarded. Holly remarked, All I know is that if someone hurt the person I love, I would totally freak out. Sarah asked Holly, And who might that be? with a smirk on her face. Teasing Holly about her love affair, Sarah steepled her fingers. Holly laughed and opened her mouth to say something when Dr. Mark Green entered and cut her off. Holly said that she and Mark were previously acquainted when Sarah introduced them. Holly accompanied my younger brother Aaron to the prom. Just to abandon him midway through the evening, Mark made fun of him. With a shy smile, Holly said she was sorry. Sarah inquired about specifics. Mark remarked, it seems like she just has eyes for Tate Black, so it was just a ruse. Holly clarified that Aaron had realized it was a fake because he had been privy to the plot. Holly remarked, but Tate's parents busted us anyway. That's why Aaron and Tate were at lacrosse camp, Mark observed. Mark mentioned, looking perplexed, that he had seen an image of Aaron on the camp's social media page, but it identified Aaron as Tate Black. Holly said, weird. Sarah asked Mark if there was any chance he had good news while he looked over her chart. I apologize, but I'm upbeat. Sarah, if anyone can survive this, it's you, Mark remarked. Holly concurred. Mark requested Holly to give Aaron a message as she was about to leave. Mark said, ask the camp photographer to meet the real Tate Black. Holly responded, will do, and raced out of the room. Xander barged into Jada's office at the police station and demanded to know why she was wasting time behind her desk. Jada remarked, I understand that you are upset about what is happening with Sarah, but that doesn't give you the right to barge in. Xander broke off to call for the hit and run driver to be taken into custody. Xander became irate and charged Jada with taking pleasure in her cushy job after Rafe's misfortune. Jada grimaced. Jada snarled, I'll tell you to watch your tone. I desire outcomes, Xander retorted. Jada assured Xander that the LAPD was actively searching for the car's driver. The monster that rendered my wife disabled would already be languishing in prison if you and every other member of this pitiful excuse for a police force could perform your jobs. Xander bellowed. Jada apologized for not knowing about Sarah's health as she began to soften. Jada, I'm not interested in your excuses. Just do your work if you want to be kind, Xander said. I am, I swear to you. It is my first priority, Jada emphasized. Xander brought up the fact that days had gone by since the accident, and still there were no suspects. Jada stated, we have a lead on the car that hit Sarah. Jada mentioned the partial plate to Xander. Jada wouldn't give Xander the information when he proposed that he ask the Titan security squad to assist in finding the car. Police are conducting this investigation. And I'm not going to let you or your group get in the way of that, Jada declared. Xander contended that his team would only be concentrating on Sarah's accident and that the police had other cases to handle. 
Jada was certain that she could not permit Xander to scare potential suspects in the investigation. Jada promised to phone Xander when she had any updates regarding an arrest, and she encouraged him to spend time with his wife. Xander complained, whoever did this to Sarah better hope, better pray that you find them before I do. Brady wondered out loud why his car was gone as he paced his penthouse living room. Maggie informed Brady over the phone that Sarah had been disabled. I apologize so much, Brady stumbled. Maggie clarified that although Sarah might be able to use her legs again, the chances were not in her favor. How can I help? Brady inquired. Maggie begged Brady to offer up prayers for justice and for Sarah. Sipping her drink at the Salem Inn, Fiona recalled the moment Xander had informed her of Sarah's paralysis. What have I done to that poor girl, dear God? stated Fiona. A knock on the door startled Fiona, who had hidden her alcohol in a drawer. Brady was standing at the entrance. Why are you in this place? Have you learned what transpired with your vehicle? Fiona inquired. Brady questioned Fiona as to why she had kept Sarah's paralysis a secret from him. Fiona brought up the fact that Sarah had experienced some motor issues to Brady's attention. I did minimize it, but that was because I believed it to be temporary, Fiona admitted. Fiona went on to say that Brady was not her top priority because she was furious about her daughter-in-law. I recognize that this is a personal matter for you. But do you realize that I'm dying right here? Brady answered back. Brady was urged to cool down by Fiona. Maybe you're not the one who caused her paralysis. Brady gave a growl. Fiona winced. Fiona emphasized, we're not even sure that you hit Sarah. Brady contended that the evidence pointed to him and shook his head. Fiona pointed out that Brady did not recall the events of the accident night and that it was a bad idea to speculate about the worst-case scenarios. Brady drank down his drink, grudgingly, as Fiona poured it for him. Brady was asked if he felt better by Fiona. It's not superior. Sarah and Xander recently tied the knot, right? Fiona is their daughter. Their entire lives lie ahead of them. It's not superior, Brady declared. Maggie gave the door a rap. Maggie and Victoria are there. Are you present? Maggie yelled. Brady was given the vodka bottle by Fiona, who then pushed him into the bathroom to conceal. Maggie entered via Fiona. I need you to give Victoria some time to herself. Maggie said, I'm going back to the hospital to see Sarah. When Fiona offered to watch Sarah, she inquired about her health. As far as I know, there is no news to share. Sarah's attempting to be courageous and unwavering. How afraid she must be, I can only imagine. Maggie remarked, considering the possibility that she won't be able to walk in the future. Maggie sighed, regretting that Sarah was not experiencing the joyous beginnings of her new marriage. Winced in the restroom was Brady. This stranger just leaves her there after taking everything away from her. Simply runs away like a coward, Maggie remarked. That's terrible. Fiona concurred. Maggie expressed gratitude to Fiona for helping with Victoria. I'm so happy Sarah found you. Maggie remarked, I know that Xander is blessed to have his mother here, especially considering what he is going through right now. Fiona gave Sarah her best wishes. Brady came out of the bathroom after Maggie had gone. That hurt so much. Seeing the grief Maggie is going through over her baby, since I'm probably the one who started it all in the first place, Brady remarked. Brady was reminded by Fiona to keep in mind that he was unsure of his involvement in the disaster. All right, let's stick to the plan, stated Fiona. Brady concurred. Fiona gave Brady her word that everything would be all right as he left. Fiona worried out loud about stopping Brady from calling the police after he left. Sarah gave Xander an introduction to Mark when he got to the hospital. 
After telling Xander to call if he had any questions, Mark walked out. Xander gave Sarah a bunch of flowers while grinning. Sarah informed Xander about Holly's visit after he saw the bag of donuts. Sarah said that Holly had promised to protect the person she loved with the same fervor as Xander. Which, Sarah went on, I assume is Tate Black. Xander asked, she's still pining after him? Sarah gave a yes nod. Given that Tate was Brady and Teresa's son, Xander contended that Holly should not date him. Xander remarked, give him a chance, he'll break her heart. Holly may find someone better than Tate, Xander countered. And is that the impression that people will have of our Victoria? With Sarah asking. No one was going to date Xander's daughter, he declared. Yes. Simply imprison her in a tower. That's a really smart plan, Sarah remarked chuckling. Xander made a commitment to protect Victoria and Sarah from harm in the future.